The EBMT annual meeting brings together professionals working in all aspects in the field of clinical bone marrow transplantation and cellular therapy. Now, as we go virtual for the 46th annual meeting, EBMT presents an outstanding programme to fit the digital format. And here to bring you the highlights, we're EBMT TV. This is EBMT TV, brought to you virtually at the 46th annual meeting of the EBMT. Now, whether you're watching at the EBMT TV virtual studio or anywhere else online, do make sure to watch it all. Today sees the presentation of EBMT's most prestigious awards, so be sure to catch our interviews with some of them here. Plus, we'll be visiting Germany's Stiftung Action Nockenmark Spender in Bayern. Don't miss that great feature. First, though, to this year's Basic Science Award winner, Antonia Muller. What's our understanding of the role that June can play in graft-versus-host disease? We have been studying and developing preclinical models of chronic GBHD for many years. When then we met Gerlinda Wernig and her lab at Stanford, who had discovered the role of June in many fibrotic diseases and conditions, it was very clear we should get together and study the role of June in chronic GBHD. So how exactly did you investigate this? We had a whole freezer full of mouse tissues, sclerodermatous skin lesions, and so we basically just need to pull those tissues out of our tissue bank and see whether June expression was also increased in those um, skin lesions. And uh, ultimately, we implanted fresh human sclerodermatous skin cells under the kidney capsule of immunocompromised mice and studied the in vivo uh, growth um, of those cells and also treatment of those cells. So what ultimately then did the experiment demonstrate? June as a transcription factor, which is a known transcription factor in many inflammatory responses, is highly upregulated and highly expressed. And we identified some downstream um, factors that were regulated by June. Um, and we showed that this can be targeted by certain agents. Chronic GVHD is not one disease with one clear pathway, but that many immunological conditions and, and inflammatory chronic conditions can end in one fibrotic pathway. So if we hit and target a downstream fibrotic pathway, that may actually resolve um, chronic lesions if that is targetable with um, drugs. Dr. Muller, congratulations once again and thank you for joining us. Thank you. EBMT TV is brought to you virtually from the 46th annual meeting of the EBMT. Find us in the EBMT TV studio on the virtual platform, on the EBMT website, and of course on the EBMT 2020 app. And make sure to hit the playlist button to check out extended versions of all our content. From award winners to hospital and donor centre site visits, it's all here on EBMT TV. Now to our feature for the day. Let's take a look at one of Germany's largest donor registries, Stiftung Action Nockenmark Spend Bayern. Heute haben wir die Situation, dass wir nahezu jedem Patienten einen geeigneten Spender vermitteln können. Das verdanken wir den vielen Millionen freiwilligen Spendern, die sich inzwischen weltweit in unsere Register eingetragen haben. Ja, die Beratung und Betreuung durch die AKW war wirklich sehr gut. Ich hoffe, dass ich damit wirklich am Menschen helfen konnte.
The Qian Qian Yuan Award recognises excellent work in lymphoma transplant research. This year's prize winning abstract comes from Monica Cabrero. I wonder if you could tell us first of all, what got this research started? In our group, we are convinced that uh, clinical trials are the best way to improve uh, patients' care. So the aim of uh, the trial to improve uh, the condition in regimen and the GBHD prophylaxis for lymphoma patients receiving a transplant. So can you tell us how you designed the trial, um, what patients you included and why? Well, we designed the trial just including uh, Ofatumumab, that uh, is a monoclonal antibody, an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody, uh, as a part of the conditioning regimen. And the patient that we included are patient usually candidates to transplant uh, with this diagnosis. Uh, usually these patients are highly pretreated. Uh, they are not young, young patients, they are not patients that can receive a very aggressive, aggressive conditioning regimen. So what were the results that you found? How, how safe was the drug and to what extent did it prevent acute GVHD? Uh, yeah, uh, the drug uh, was uh, safe, there was not uh, uh, any serious uh, adverse event related to the drug. Uh, only 16% of them uh, were diagnosed with, uh, with grade 3 or 4 uh, acute DVAT, that is the most uh, severe uh, grade. So what's next for you and your team then? We are continuing the, the same way. We are uh, trying to, to improve and develop better ways to do the prophylaxis of DVHD. And of course, we are developing CAR-T cells and it's uh, all our uh, lines of research. Thank you so much for joining us, Monica, and many congratulations once again. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Dr. Tafalori, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Well, first of all, many congratulations on the award. I wonder if you could tell us to start with, what were the limitations that you identified in the use of immunotherapy to treat leukemia, which drove this research? So allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is a peculiar example of adaptive immunotherapy, and it's considered the best therapeutic option for high-risk leukemia patients. However, relapse after transplantation still remains an open issue for many patients, and little is known about its biology. So how did you go about identifying the, the drivers for relapse after transplantation? So we decided to perform a systematic comparison between purified leukemia blasts collected at the disease diagnosis and relapse after transplantation. High throughput technologies and immunophenotypic analysis were applied to be able to identify a pattern that was specifically acquired by leukemia cells at relapse after transplantation. Have you been able to identify an immune pattern for all relapses? We reveal two novel non-genomic but epigenetic mechanisms exploited by leukemia cells to evade donor immune system. On the one hand, leukemia cells reduce the expression of HLA molecules on their surface, thus uh, hiding from donor lymphocyte surveillance. On the other hand, they increase the presence of uh, specific immunosuppressive receptors that tell lymphocytes to slow down their activity, turning off the immune response. So what does this mean for this type of treatment then? Based on each the identified immune evasion mechanism, specific therapeutic intervention could be implemented, like the induction of a controlled inflammatory state that would then promote the re-expression of HLA molecules. Thank you so much for joining us and once again, many congratulations on the award. Thank you so much. The Van Beckham Award is EBMT's most prestigious prize, and this year it goes to some potentially practice-changing research looking at a new treatment for severe aplastic anemia. Gentlemen, first of all, thank you for joining us, and many congratulations on the award. Could you start by telling us what are the limitations in our existing approach to treatment of patients with severe aplastic anemia? 70% of patients with idiopathic aplastic anemia will require, still require, immunosuppression associated or ATG plus cyclosporine. 
And since 40 years, this tender treatment associated or cytogen cyclosporin is leading to a response of 60 to 70 percent. So the aim of RACE was to try to improve the standard treatment by adding at the top of standard immunosuppression a thrombopag, a thromboeptine receptor agonist. Antonio, what prompted running the RACE trial then? More or less 10 years ago, uh, a thrombopag was used to treat some refractory patient, refractory to immunosuppressive treatment, and quite surprisingly, these patients were improving their blood counts. And of course, the next step was just to combine a thrombopag with the standard of care given by horse ATG and cyclosporin. Uh, a phase two trial uh, was conducted at NIH and, and data were very, very uh, promising because they were able to improve the rate of response and the quality of response was very good. So. Based on this observation, we decided within the EBMT to run the, a trial with the highest evidence of efficacy. So a, a phase three large randomized trial using a standard of care, horse ATG and cyclosporin, and as exploratory R, the same uh, platform, horse ATG and cyclosporin, plus l thrombopag on top of it. So Carlo, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about how the trial was run and, and when did it start? Well, actually, race was ideated in 2014 and the first patient was recruited in July 2015. The last one was enrolled in the trial in, the trial in uh, April 2019. So uh, if we said like this, looks like an easy thing to deal with, but honestly, it was not that because it was like a, a kind of roller coaster ride which we were able really to uh, go through because of the very, very strong uh, team spirit that pervaded the severe aplastic anemia working party of the DMT, but also thanks to the strong cooperation of the CTO, the clinical trial office in Leiden, belonging to the DMT, and of course the support of the um, companies Novartis and Pfizer. So Regis, what have the results shown then? The primary endpoint was to triple the complete response at three months in those patients. So basically we were expected to increase the rate of response from 7% from what we observed in historical controls at three months to 20% uh, in patients uh, under a thrombopag. And that's what uh, we achieved because the rate was about 10% almost in the standard treatment arm and it reached to almost 22% in the patients who were receiving standard arm plus a thrombopag. And the other achievement that was very uh, uh, straightforward is that there was no safety concern between the standard arm treatment and the, the, the patients who received the experimental arm. So Antonio, how much of a game changer is this then for treatment of SAA patients? We believe that we are changing uh, the treatment paradigm for patients uh, receiving immunosuppression with, with the plastic anemia. At the moment, uh, at least in Europe, a thrombopag is not yet approved for the frontline treatment of a plastic anemia. However, uh, we believe that at the moment, the triple therapy with RCTG, cyclosporin, and uh, a thrombopag uh, is the most effective non-transplant treatment for patients suffering from severe plastic anemia. So Carlo, let me come to you finally. What's next for you and the team now that you've won this award? Well, Severe Plastic Anemia Working Party of the EBMT has always been one of the most active working party within the society. But most importantly, I think that the jewel is what we're going to test prospectively, which is the long-term side effects of this trial we are discussing today. This long-term follow-up study aims to investigate how long the response will be lasting over time, speaking of five, ten years, and especially how long and how many of the side effects, bad side effects, particularly clonal evolution, we're going to meet over this long-term follow-up. Well, Regis, Antonio and Carlo, many congratulations once again on the award, and thank you so much to all of you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Really exciting work there from the Van Beckham Award winners. And we hope to see more from that pioneering research over the coming years. Now, EBMT 2020 is coming to an end and this is our last show. We've caught some of the most exciting presentations, chatted to the award winners 
and looked at work in the field from around the world. And the great news is that it's all available to watch for months to come. So make sure that you check it out and share everything on the playlist. But for now, from all of the EBMT TV team, we hope you enjoy the rest of the meeting and look forward to seeing you in person next year in Madrid. Thank you.